Turn up, that's the way I do turn up. <laughs> okay, we should probably keep going. <laughs> We're at the last session of our evangelism training and it's a super important one because uh, for a lot of us, uh, remember, God does the work and we're going to see uh, our friends, we're going to see people come to faith in Christ. But when they start their journey with Christ, is our relationship with them over? Uh, how, can we, how can we help them uh, at the beginning of their journey? And so skill number six uh, is called the wheel. And uh, it's super important. Why? Because it's interesting that God, when, when he was at the end of his earthly life and right before he ascended, he told his disciples uh, to go and make disciples. Did he, tell, did he tell them to go and make converts? No. No, he told them uh, to go and make disciples. disciples. And disciples are simply devoted followers of Jesus Christ. He, Jesus didn't say, come and believe in me. He invited us to follow him. And so uh, how do we help? Uh, how do we help people begin to follow Jesus? I also like to say that a devoted follower makes disciples. Yes. That's one of the measurements. And, and this is just, an, it's a great tool we're going to uh, examine together yes. and hopefully teach you. Uh, like the three circles, we're adopting this illustration from a gentleman named Dawson Trotman, who founded a ministry called The Navigators. And, and really, uh, his desire was just what we said. How, how can we give people a simple illustration, uh, a skill that helps them uh, understand how to begin and grow as a follower of Christ. And I love this illustration, Phil, because I, I like the idea of a wheel uh, in the sense that um, a wheel is moving. Mm -hmm. a, a wheel is moving somewhere, going in a direction. And when Jesus enters a life, uh, like Paul said, he who began a good work in you God will carry it. Yeah. He's bringing it to completion. And so, you know, the idea of, of a wheel really makes sense. Yes. Because I, I have found too, Todd, that there's many believers that have never been through the wheel illustration as well. Yeah. And it's a very, very helpful tool in even discipling someone who is a Christian as well. I totally Not just agree. someone who's a new Christian. But someone that it has been a Christian for a while, so I think it's a great thing for both. To go Absolutely, and so let's let's dive in. Uh, you're going to see on your screen uh, the diagram of the wheel, and we all know that a wheel in the wheel there's a center. Uh, we call that center sometimes a hub, yeah. and the hub uh, in this illustration represents our new life. It, it represents our uh, our, a new heart that God uh, has given us. When we surrender our lives uh, to Christ, His love, uh, His power, His life enters that person and begins a healing and transforming work in that person's relationship with God. Mm -hmm. But it, it starts with Christ being at the center. And uh, not only does it heal, that, that power and that love begin to heal our relationship uh, with Him, but it also begins to transform and restore and heal our relationship with ourselves and, and our relationship uh, with others. I love the way the Apostle Paul said it. He said it this way, Therefore, if anyone is in Christ, he is a new creation. Yes. The old is gone and, and the, new, the new has, has come. come. I know personally, Todd, in my life, there's such a big difference between religion in which I feel like I have to have the power to obey. Yes. But when I began to understand this concept of the hub, that for the first time in my life, I realized that it was Christ's power in me. Yes. That was giving me the power to obey. 
And that is such a big difference between a relationship driven by Christ and religion in which I'm trying to do it myself. Yes. That's why I think this hub is so important. And and Phil, you just that was a perfect transition into the next into the next part of the wheel and explaining uh, the rim around the of uh, the wheel, and that is our obedience to Christ. It would be unfortunate, right, for this this love and this power to come into our lives right. internally, but not get traction in our lives. And so the rim in many ways is where the rubber meets the road and how what's happening on the inside of our lives in Christ begins to affect uh, the the outside. And again, uh, I'm so thankful for the Word of God because it, it explains this truth. Paul said it's Christ's love in him that compels us because we're convinced that Christ died. And because Christ died, therefore all died. And he says, and he died for all that those who live should no longer live for themselves, but for him who died for them and was raised again. Yes. So Phil, exactly what you just said, what compels me to be yes. obedient and to yield and surrender my life to Christ to be obedient? It's Christ's love in me. It's not something I'm trying to conjure up or manufacture myself or earn his love. It's his love that's at work in me. And in many ways, the way we can, we show the world we're convinced that he loves us is by the way we love him Yes, through our and, obedience. Yes. I, and Todd, again, I, we're, we're repeating this because it is so important to understand the grace of this, that he gives you his presence through the Holy Spirit who comes in your life. And when the Holy Spirit comes in your life, in the hub of your life, he produces the fruit. Yes. I don't produce the fruit. In fact, he gets the credit. He's the one that produces the fruit, gives me the power in order to live out a life of surrender and obedience. It's well and said. I'm glad it's up to him and not up to Yes, us. absolutely. How liberating that is that? It's a work that he started and he continues to do in us and exactly what we said in the beginning and he will carry it to completion. Uh, we're gonna give you an opportunity just to pause the video and ponder these two questions. Maybe turn to someone or if you're by yourself, consider these questions. Uh, what does, what does uh, Christ as the center of your life, what does that mean to you? What does that mean to you? And secondly, how has Christ, how has Christ begun to change your life uh, from the inside to the outside? So pause the video and, and consider those questions and we'll be back in a moment. All right, so we talked about the hub, but now we're gonna talk about the spokes. Why are we going to talk about the spokes? Because the spokes of the wheel are how Christ delivers the power to us. So there's two spokes that are vertical and there's two spokes that are horizontal. Hmm. All spokes need to be in place or you run on a flat tire. Don't want to be driving down the road like this. Nice round tire. So the vertical spokes <laughs> have to do with our relationship with the Lord. Go like this. I think it's good if you get involved. And the horizontal spokes have to do with our relationships with each other. The greatest command is love the Lord God with all your heart, soul, strength, and mind, and love others. That's good. So as we're loving God, this comes first. We're able to love others. They're the spokes. So let me deal with the spoke at the top. Maybe the most important, they're all important. Maybe the most important one, I think, is the Word of God. Why? Because how do we learn about who we are? How do we learn about who God is? Scripture clearly tells us that we learn that from His Word. It is the revelation to learn about ourselves and to learn about God. And then even more than that, Hebrews 4 says that the Word of God is living and active, which means this. As we're in the Word of God, it comes into our lives. We talked about that hub. The Holy Spirit takes us, and what's he do with it? He begins to transform us from the inside out so that the Word of God changes us and forms us from the inside out as we engage in it. So it's not just learning about God or learning about ourselves. It's about being transformed by the Word of God. But you got to be in it in order for that to happen. 
So mm. the word of God, that's a top spoke. Underneath that, the other vertical is prayer. Simply stated, what is prayer? Communicating with God. And if we want to be in a relationship with any human being, we need to. Yeah, we need to communicate. Talk. Yeah. If you told me that you loved someone or you were in a relationship with someone or you're single and trying to build a relationship and you weren't talking, I'd say that's dysfunctional. Hmm. God designed us to have communication with him, to have intimacy with him. And we do that through prayer, through communicating to him. And that is what enlivens our relationship with him. Why? In prayer, we ask him to help us. In prayer, we thank him for how he's helping us. In prayer, we worship him because he's worthy of our worship. In prayer, we pray for other people. So prayer is this ongoing conversation. Scripture says pray without ceasing. So the first two vertical, uh, the first two lines are prayer and the word. So here's what I want you to think about. When in your day are you gonna set aside time to be with God through his word and through prayer? A great way to do that is to start with the book of John, open it up, pray. Lord, you wrote this, this is your word. Teach me and transform me through it. Read it, let God teach you through it. When you're done reading, Lord, change me, make me more like you as you're reading the word. Maybe take one chapter a day, spend some time with the Lord every day. And you can even journal what you're learning. That's so good. That's so good, Phil. And I, it took, let's talk now about the horizontal yes. spokes. And it's, it is uh, really uh, cool when you consider this illustration and what it teaches, because all the spokes are interdependent on each other. Yes. And this next one, fellowship, I know for me, uh, being with other people, fellowshipping, I've learned the Bible more and I learned how to study it and learn how to absorb it. And not only that, I think praying with other people. Yes. But fellowship uh, in and of itself, it's important to point out when Christ comes into your life, you not only uh, have a unity with the God of the universe, you become one with him. Remember Christ in you, the center. He also unifies yes. you to his body. Right. He unifies you, you with his, his family. Yes. You become a child of his God. Family. And so uh, not only does he want to heal your relationship with him, he wants to make your relationships with others new. He wants to restore your relationship with other people. But we need fellowship. Uh, it's so important. Uh, God directed his followers. He even sent them out two by two. Yeah. Uh, but being with other people, being with other people, like-minded people, people who were also following Christ, his design was when we would come alongside each other, we would support each other. Yes. We would help each other. We would encourage each other, each other's faith. And I mean, honestly, Phil, just sitting here looking yes. at you, uh, I'm... I'm so thankful for the years, the years and just talking about our relationship uh, with the Lord together. Like, I don't know, apart from gathering with other Christians shoulder to shoulder where we we hold the load together. I don't know if I would be where I am in my journey apart from fellowship. Yes. Apart from being with brothers and sisters in Christ. So uh, I think the question I think here is, uh, how really has God revealed or encouraged you by being with other believers? Are you, are you in fellowship? Maybe what's a step um, that you need to take in order to be with like-minded believers, yeah. with people who love Christ, whether that's going your involvement in a local church, a life group, or do you have a mentor? So important. Yes. Uh, that last spoke, and I love this last spoke because we're coming full circle. Yeah. When Christ comes into your life, Phil, w when his love becomes central, that love and that power was kind of like a sponge. It's like when you receive it, it wasn't meant to be held in that sponge just for you. It was meant to be squeezed mm -hmm. and overflow onto people who were just honestly just like you before you met Christ. Yes. 
And so part of the Christian life is seeing and experiencing the love of Christ overflow onto other people. people. And you begin to ask the question, uh, who are the people in my life? Who are the people in your life uh, that need to understand that same love and power that has come within you to save you and change you. And you begin to ask the question, if you remember it, who's your one? There it is. We'll who's see. your one? And so when we are walking people through this illustration, we're bringing them right back. And we saw it in the yes. three circles illustration, right? He said, he, for, we're brought right back where we go, we go. into the brokenness because we're in the brokenness of people's yeah. lives and yes. God uses us why he gives us his heart and remember his heart is for what is lost yes what's valuable to him is those who still don't know still don't know that the God of the universe loves them most yes and so we'll leave you with these two questions with with this last spoke is who's who's your, who's your, your one, one? And, uh, and, and with that, we come to the end of our training, yes. Phil. And, uh, and are you prepared to share? Yeah, and are you prepared to, to share? share the gospel. Because God will open should, doors. Yes, when the opportunity comes, are you ready? We, and, and God will make you ready. <laughs> you and uh, I don't ever really feel like I am totally ready, but I do know the one who is in me. Yes. He opens the doors and he prepares not only me, but he prepares the people That's that right. we get to share with. So. Thanks for watching, and uh, we are praying, we are praying that uh, God continues to do His work in you as we have this such a gift to affect the lives of others.